Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at the best bushcrafting axe you can get. Now, a little while back I did a video similar to talking about the best bushcrafting hatchet, and today I thought I would do a video talking about the best bushcrafting axe. Now, I'm not going to lie, for most of my time bushcrafting, I've used this guy here, and really, I went from the Wetterling Swedish Forest axe, which was a 26-inch handled axe that was really similar to this guy, to the Scandi Forest Axe by GBA. I kind of just stuck there for years, but I have been playing with smaller axes, so I thought today I would kind of revisit this topic and talk about, you know, the pros and cons to each of these tools and to talk about some of the differences and what you can use for bushcrafting effectively and really what is the best choice for you when it comes down. So when it comes down to it. Now, I want to break this down into kind of two different levels of bushcrafting because some people like to build more, some people like to camp more, and some people like a good mix of both. And there's also different uh, experience levels. So there are beginners, you know, there are people who are more advanced, more experienced, and I think that as your experience grows, your desire to do more in bushcrafting, especially, at least in my, my opinion, you know, the more of the crafting the more you want to kind of get into crafting and building things. So that's going to play a role into this as well. So to start off uh, with beginners and new people in mind, what I would really say for the best bushcrafting axe that you can get would probably be something like this Holtzbrook Anabi or something like the Grands Forest Brooks Small Forest Axe. Now personally I would choose the Small Forest Axe, but really a 19 inch to 20 inch small axe like this is going to probably be your best tool and the reason why generally people don't recommend smaller tools but honestly this is a very packable size and a very reasonable weight to carry in but at the same time with enough motivation experience and practice you can do a lot of work with this little guy here even though it is five inches shorter in handle length uh, the head weight and the head blade length is pretty similar to a more standard or more typical small axe, something like a boy's axe. And so your ability to still do things like bucking wood, felling trees, is definitely there with this tool. So with that said, I would say if you're starting out in bushcrafting, you know, oftentimes most people start out and their primary focus is, you know, building small shelters, building, you know, fire reflectors, getting firewood. And so if that's your goals, the 20 inch to 19 inch, you know, kind of small forest axes are going to be right up your alley and they're going to allow you to do a lot and learn a lot without having to carry in a really heavy, long tool that kind of can be a little bit cumbersome at times. So that's what I would say about beginners and really what the best bushcrafting axe is. Now, I'm not necessarily going to name a brand or a model. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not the largest fan of Holtzbrook, but they do make an okay axe in my opinion. Uh, it is serviceable to say the least. So that is my opinion on that. But anyways, let's jump over to the Scandi Forest Axe. Now the Scandi Forest Axe is widely regarded as one of the best axes if you can only have one axe and I would largely find that to be true with the exception that if you're more experienced and depending on what you want. The Scandi Forest Axe like I said is a 25 inch handled axe which is not terribly long and of course the blade length is a little bit more than something like this and of course the head weight's a little bit heftier but where it really comes into play is what you're intending to do with it. The 25 inch handled axe is a monster when it comes to wood. This guy will absolutely just bite into especially your you know four to five inch uh, thick trees you know this thing is going to just demolish them and it's going to fell trees fast it's going to buck trees fast and it's going to do a really good job so if that's what you're wanting you know if you're trying to build larger shelters if you're trying to make more of a permanent base camp if you're trying to collect wood for multiple nights you know not just talking about one night but you know multiple and you're going to want to look at something a little bit larger like this Scandi Forest Axe that will be more effective and more efficient at the job. 
But once again, what I like about starting with something a little bit smaller is it teaches you how to use the tool and it teaches you, you know, what you can and cannot do and how to kind of, you know, work around that so that when you get to something like a little bit larger axe, you kind of know how you can make it work and do larger jobs than you might have initially in than you might have initially anticipated. So that is what I would say about the uh, GBA Scandi Forest Axe. It is a really great tool. If you could truly only have one axe, this is probably the best one axe to go with. But if you're starting out, you're new, I would recommend something a little bit smaller because the biggest thing that I see with new bushcrafters and new woodsmen by and large is when they get into a new tool or when they are starting out, you know, and they get their kind of first set of tools, if those tools aren't, you know, easy and effective for them to carry, oftentimes they end up getting discarded. So that's why I like the 20 inch is because it's something that a lot of people will still want to pack or something that they find reasonable enough to pack. And like I said, setting these two heads on top of each other, pull to pull, you can see that the head length, the head, the head length, the head weight, and the head size is about the same on these two tools, but your handle length is what makes the difference. So that's what I would say, and honestly, that is uh, my experience with axes and the best axes for bushcrafting. So like I said, it kind of goes both ways. I would, like similar to the hatchets, I would stay away from anything too crazy, too heavy, and too long. But by and large, if you're sticking with a smaller axe like either of these two, you're definitely going to be good for bushcrafting. Anyways, guys, that's really all the experience I have to share, and that's what I wanted to make this video about. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, and hopefully you've gleaned a little bit from it. As always, God bless, and I'm out.